fellow ta Toastmasters and honoured guests. They sound bad as they are, but these come from the time when names were given with meanings. And if you know the meanings, it's even worse. A remnant remains. Speedy spoil and plunder. A remnant remains. Speedy spoil and plunder. If you don't come now, you won't get any tea. Now, some people still give their children names. I can think of some girls' names. Faith, Hope, Grace. Strange, there don't seem to be so many boys' names that are virtues. I do know one girl who was called Forget. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's a bit counterproductive, because if you call your child Forget to forget something, wouldn't she remind you of it? But most people today don't choose names with meanings. But they do choose names with associations. My family are really families. We have my grandfather, who was Sidney Herbert, after an artist. I have an uncle, James Barry, after the writer of The Water Babies. And I have um, a cousin, James Mason, after the actor. And I have a cousin who's called her baby Georgia, and the surname is Brown. Uh, now, sweet Georgia Brown may not mind it too much because she's just gone to music college, so perhaps it's appropriate that she's named after a song. But these associations are less common today than choosing a popular name. There are lists of popular names, and you can choose to have your child as a Rebecca or a Dylan as a name that is on the chart. My own daughter decided not to do that. In fact, she was absolutely adamant that it was not to be a popular name. Now, just imagine, it's the middle of the night. I'm not quite asleep because I am expecting a phone call. Rings. I dash out of bed because we don't have a phone in the bedroom. I dash to the phone. Hello? Wonderful. Congratulations. It's a boy. Congratulations. Everybody's all right? Good. And have you got a name? Pardon? <laughs> Any reason for Rex? Yes, I know it means king. I'm thinking Oedipus Rex, Pterosaurus Rex. But at least I didn't think, oh, that's the name of a dog, like some of my friends do. <laughs> Their second child was okay. She is called Honor. Again, very unusual, but it's Christian and nice. Third time round, it's Clover. Of animals this time. <laughs> Children's stories, there's Clover the guinea pig, Clover the rabbit, Clover the calf. And then a few days later, their friends had a child, and she was called Daisy. And I'm afraid that did make me think of two cows in the field. <laughs>
when you choose the name of your child. Now there's the Daniels family who called their son Jack. <laughs> I know the Wales family whose grandson is Jonah. Some people end up having a very unfortunate name. Now, I don't blame A.A. Uh, a. Milne for calling his son Christopher Robin, though perhaps he shouldn't have put him in a book. But poor Christopher Robin spent his school time and his university time having Where's Pooh called after him. <laughs> and there's, but there's no excuse for the Christopher family who have called their son Robin. Just to end, another warning, there's a family where they have two Ians, because the father was sent to register the birth, he wasn't used to looking after his toddler, and just at the point where the register said, registrar said, this is, uh, what name do you want? Ian was climbing out of the window, so he said, Ian! <laughs> and Ian, it is in the register, two brothers, both called Ian. <laughs> My request to you is if you are naming your child, be thoughtful, be careful, and above all, fellow Toastmasters, be kind. <laughs>